the reason why I'm asking it is because mm -hmm. maybe somebody uses the washroom mm -hmm. and then comes out and then touches the door handle mm -hmm. and then you come and touch the same handle. Mm -hmm. Are you going to contract the yes. parasite? Absolutely. So that after person... how long, if you haven't sanitized the door mm -hmm. handle, how long will that microscopic egg mm -hmm. be alive on that handle? Hello, a very good afternoon. This is the Distro Show. It's a new year, new season. We all have crossed over with one goal in mind, and that is sitting at those lofty heights at the heart of success. But we tend to do so at the expense of our bodies, which is why today I'm joined by the microbiologist Samuel Kapua, who is going to take us through the issues concerning the insides of our bodies. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. How have you been? I've been good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. I saw you've been in coast just the other day. Yeah, well, in as much as we talk about taking care of our bodies, yeah. it should not be internally only. It should also feed our spirit. So, yeah, I saw yes. that. You're doing so good. <laughs> I'm coming at you with the one simple perception. I mean, people usually take, for instance, boys. Boys and their toys. When their toys are having just simple troubles, simple issues, they run to the mechanics, but they forget so much about their bodies. As we all know, charity starts at home, and this starts from a personal hygiene level. And that's why I'm here today to educate your audience on how to maintain hygiene, on how to prevent contacting parasites. Educate us, what are parasites? Well, basically, parasites are organisms that uh, can live in or on, on organisms of other species, and uh, they obtain nutrients from them for their survival. Um, this essentially means that uh, parasites cannot survive on their own and they require a host. Uh, take an example, if a parasite lives in a human being, the human being is the host and they have to obtain nutrients from the host so that they can be able to survive. So already it's an interesting topic because most of the times I see people doing skincare. I mean, people are always obsessed with their appearance from the outside, but we tend to forget so much about the inside. So it would be so nice for you to tell us because yeah. we can't see what is inside us. How do we contact these parasites? Well, uh, I think it would be good to mention some of the parasites. You know, we have hookworms, flatworms, whipworms. Uh, probably these are names that you've had while you're in school. And uh, there are several ways in which we can contract these parasites. And um, well, one of them can be either direct human contact, like through handshakes, you can be able to pass that parasite. If I have the parasite, I can be able to pass it to you. The other way is through consumption of uh, fruits and vegetables that are not washed well. So you end up eating the parasitic eggs and you can get infected by the parasites. Also, the other way is um, can be transmitted from animals to human beings. Okay. And this is especially through consumption of raw or undercooked food, especially meat. And this is most common in uh, pork products and beef products. I'll uh, maybe expound further on how one can contract these uh, parasites from consumption of pork and beef so that at least uh, the audience can understand more. Also, you can uh, contract these parasites from um, inanimate objects like surfaces, doorknobs. You just touch them and uh, if someone had the parasite, you can be able to contract it. From my understanding, maybe there is somebody who wants to just uh, already run away from this video, <laughs> not knowing that they have parasites in them. So I would want you to tell us yeah. what are the signs and symptoms to show us that we have parasites in us. Basically, the most common, we have uh, irritable bowel syndrome that is called IBS. This is common whereby um, you find yourself, you're either having constipation, you have diarrhea, or you're passing gases. So that is basically one of the signs that it might be a parasitic infection. Also, you might ha find someone infected by parasites, they have insatiable appetite. Like just you're consuming food over short periods of time. This is because the nutrients from that food is utilized by the parasites. And uh, you just keep on eating, eating and eating. We also have um, malaise, 
this is basically general body fatigue. You just okay. you find most of the times you just you're tired. Yeah. And this sometimes be can be accompanied by mild fever, though in uh, that is in rare cases. And um, we can also find um, people with parasitic infections. They have skin irritation. This can be rosacea or eczema or uh, rashes on the skin. This can be a sign that you have parasites in you. And um, lastly, we have um, itchiness in the rectal area. Okay. So this is common, um, especially at night. So we do have a parasite that is called the whipworm, or scientifically, Trichuris trichura, okay. whereby when you're asleep, the female worm moves from the colon area down to the external rectal area, that mm -hmm. is the anal area, and it lays its eggs there. Mm -hmm. So this happens at night when you're asleep. So it's most common in children. You find a, a kid um, scratching the anal area or even an adult. Mm -hmm. That is one of the signs that uh, you might be having parasites in you. This is West African phrase of he who sleeps with an itchy ass wakes up with smelly fingers. fingers. It's usually because of the ones in your body. Well, um, that can be subjective. It depends on as to why you're saying that proverb, that West African proverb. But uh, yeah, I've heard in it this a lot. context, I can say yes, definitely you will have smelly fingers if you itch the anal area. So, yeah, so the female parasite, when you're asleep, yeah. it uh, travels from the colon area down to the external rectal area that is the anal mm -hmm. and it deposits its eggs and goes back. Okay. Yeah, that is the life cycle of this weapon. I might be having the skin irritation, perhaps fatigue mm -hmm. and uh, general body exhaustion, yeah. but I can't be too sure that I have parasites. How can I be or what can I do to ascertain that there's parasites in me? Well, firstly, you have to go to a hospital. So once you go to hospital, the doctor will ask for a conventional stool test if they suspect you have a parasite in you. So that is one of the diagnostic methods to find out if you have a parasitic uh, infection. The other one is uh, endoscopy. This is whereby a pipe with a camera is put through your mouth just mm -hmm. to have a view of the internal area, especially the liver area whereby some of these parasites lay their eggs there. Um, then lastly, you can do also a colonoscopy. Okay. Uh, this is whereby it's just the same as endoscopy, but the only difference is uh, the pipe is put through the anal area just to okay. view the colon areas to see if we can be able to see parasitic eggs there. But the most common method is a conventional stool test, which is not that accurate. So you're in hospital, the doctor tells you you have worms in you and certainly he's telling you these are things that are using your body to fuel their lives mm -hmm. is it the end of the world or do you have a way to prevent them well it's not the end of the world mm -hmm. um, because um, there are ways in which you can prevent contracting these parasites so the basic one is uh, just maintaining hygiene that is washing your hands after visiting the restroom so that you don't consume food with uh, dirty hands. Also wash your vegetables and fruits well before consumption. Eat food that is well cooked, that is especially fish and meat, make sure it's well cooked. And if you're warming meat or fish, make sure the internal temperature is around uh, 75 degrees Celsius, that is the standard temperature at least for consuming <coughs> food that has been warmed. Um, then lastly, you should also drain stagnant water, as this is how most of the people get bilharzia, whereby a kid or an adult can just step the stagnant water barefoot and they have a wound in their feet. And that is how these larval parasites, they enter the body and uh, cause infection. You've been educated on how to prevent the parasites. Mm -hmm. After you get that sort of education, mm -hmm. is there a way for you to cure what you already have in you? As a worm. Once you've been uh, diagnosed with a parasite in you, uh, a doctor or a physician will prescribe uh, antiparasitic drugs for you to use uh, so that you can get rid of the parasite that is in your body. And uh, just advise 
anyone that is uh, provided with medication, just take the full dosage, just to avoid recurrence. How easy is it to contract to contract these parasites? It's actually easy. Like after this interview, if I had not washed my hands and we shake hands, I can easily pass that parasite to you. So it's very easy for you to contract the parasites. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, human beings are social creatures. We can't confine ourselves to a single place. However, if we just uh, observe the basic hygiene, we can be able to prevent uh, ourselves from contracting parasites. Maybe somebody uses the washroom mm -hmm. and then comes out and then touches the door handle. Mm -hmm. And then you come and touch the same handle. Mm -hmm. Are you going to contract the yes. parasite? Absolutely. So after person, how long, if you haven't sanitized the door mm -hmm. handle, how long will that microscopic egg mm -hmm. be alive on that handle? External environment, most of these parasitic organisms survive in cyst form. And um, not all of them, but some uh, do not survive in cyst form. And those that are in cyst form are able to survive for a longer period of time as they're, in, they're able to endure their harsh climatic conditions. Hence, to answer your question, they can survive long on the doorknob. And once ingested, they travel through the stomach and uh, attach themselves to the intestinal wall. Very educative topic. I'm sure I've learned a lot myself. But then I'm wondering, we usually live with people. You could be living with a brother, you could be living with a friend, mm -hmm. and perhaps you are, you're practicing healthy hygiene. Yet I'm very careless. And we tend to touch the same items. I give you my phone and maybe mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I have parasites in me. And like you said, they are so easily passed on to yeah. somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, what should this healthy person be doing to make sure they're not coming from this person who is so careless mm -hmm. to them? Well, um, there's some things that we can't control. Okay. And as much as we try to live a healthy lifestyle, uh, there are always loopholes in life, you know? You can always try to live by the rules, but then you can also contract this parasite in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the ways is um, to educate, since you know the importance of hygiene, it is, to, it is best to educate this carefree person on the importance of hygiene and why it will be essential to maintain hygiene to at least avoid transmission of this parasite from you to them or from them to you. That way, I think we can minimize the risk of exposure and transmission. It's not a guarantee that it will eliminate, but it will minimize the risk of uh, spread. That's a no-brainer, yes, for sure. Information is all out there, but there's people who are carefree, like I said. Mm -hmm. So what, will, what should you do on your end? I mean, if you can't do anything about this other person, what should mm -hmm. you do? For instance, I'm thinking maybe something like deworming, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, you know, as much as you try to take all this precaution and you try to educate the other person and they don't listen, it is essential to deworm. That is be one of the ways that you can at least... Just uh, clarify a little bit on how long should somebody take before they deworm again and again, because it's mm -hmm. a lifelong thing, I imagine. Well, when it comes to deworming, uh, there are many variables to consider. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the age yeah. and the medication. Uh, children will be given uh, a different time frame and a different medication, and adults will be given the same different time frame and a different medication. However, um, I will say the time range is between two weeks to six months on when one should deworm. But uh, as I said, that is dependent on uh, a variety of variables. I believe that you've answered most of your questions. He's answered most of your questions, but just for the benefit of the doubt, maybe there's a few questions that he hasn't answered, uh, which is why I'm taking this opportunity to ask you about the cycle. Maybe you just expound on the cycle uh, mm -hmm. by which these worms uh, come from undercooked meat or uh, stagnant water to the body. Um, maybe to expound more on how do these uh, parasites get from um, this undercooked meat or from the stagnant water into our bodies. Um, I'm going to start with how we get um, bilharzia. This is uh, gotten from stagnant water. So whenever a human being goes to assist themselves either for a short or a long call, 
and they have these parasitic eggs in them. They deposit them in the water and these eggs will hatch into larval stages. We do have uh, snails in the water, so these are uh, larval. Uh, parasites will enter the snail and they will mature in there, after which the snail will release them back to the water. So when someone steps on this water barefooted and they have an open wound, so this is now the larval uh, uh, parasite will now enter through the human body, through that open wound on the foot, and uh, they will enter into the blood circulation and I uh, will go all the way to the liver. So in the liver is where now they will mature into adults. Then some of them, uh, we do have uh, some species of these uh, Bilhazia worms. The scientific names are either Cystosoma mansoni, we have Cystosoma japonicum, Cystosoma mekongi, and um, Cystosoma hematobium. So the hematobium is the one that is passed through the urine, then the other three are passed through the stool. So once they have matured in the liver, the hematobium will go to the urinary area around the urinary tract and uh, it will lay its eggs there. Then the other three will go to the mesenteric area, which is basically the digestive area to the small intestines and will deposit their eggs there. Then um, when we consume raw or undercooked meat, this can be any street food. This can be either Ukena Pali or Nakula or just any food that uh, you consume that is undercooked. So we do have um, two types of uh, parasitic species. That is uh, Tainia solium, which is found in pork, and Tainia saginata, which is found in beef. So um, these eggs uh, can be deposited by human beings when uh, they go to assist themselves in the open. So um, when the pigs and the cows eat grass, they will consume this grass together with the eggs. And uh, this will now enter the animal's body and will inhabit the muscular area of the animal. This is because these areas are rich with oxygen and nutrients, so the parasite will multiply best there. And then when you kill the animal and consume this meat, when it's not well cooked, when others consume either ham from beef or pork, um, you can be able now to get the, ingest the parasites and uh, they'll go all the way to the intestinal area. And the cycle goes on when you pass the stool, the animals consume the grass, that's how the cycle goes. So um, as I advised earlier, best you drain this stagnant water to suffocate these uh, parasites from growing from creating an environment whereby they can mature to stages that they can cause infection and make sure that your meat is well cooked for consumption. That was very educative and very informative. I'm very tempted to keep flipping page by page. You have so much in you about these zones, but I want you to close the show for us today. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. It has been a pleasure to share this with your audience and um, at least let them know one or two things about parasites. To your audience, I would like to tell them to like, share, subscribe, and uh, spread the love. This is a new year. And as much as we chase our dreams, let's not forget the basic hygiene.